G'day everyone, how's it going? Uh, just coming at you from the studio today and this is going to be the second video that I'm doing on the Canon Log on the 5D Mark IV. So let's get straight into it. So in this video I want to show you how to use the Canon provided LUT to apply to your Canon Log footage on the 5D Mark IV and to get a great end result without even having to color correct or anything like that. So basically, uh, I've done a video before and I'm gonna link that above right now on how to use these, the gray card, it's the digital exposure card uh, that I'll link to below as well. You can pick it up for about 10 or 15 US dollars off Amazon, worth every penny. It's got white, white on one side, gray on the other. I've done a video on that already, as I said, and that video will help you to get your exposure and also your white balance. And that's really important to do before you take your footage into the NLE and start editing it. I use Premiere Pro, so I'm gonna show you the method in Premiere Pro through Lumetri Color and applying the LUT there. So let me just go through the process quickly of getting the white balance and the exposure right. And I'm gonna fast forward this part so that you can see the way that I do it. So here we are in Canon C-Log. It looks as though the image is correctly exposed if you looked at this histogram here, but in actual fact, we're way overexposed. And the way I can work that out is I'll bring in this gray card, and basically, I'm just gonna sit it right here next to me, um, and I'm just gonna move it to where it kind of reflects the light as my skin tone would reflect the light. Now what I wanna do is I wanna stop this image down so it's correct. So I'm just gonna look at my monitor here and try and get this exposure correct. So let me just stop this image down using the uh, aperture to do that. So now this gray card is at 40% IRE and I might just drop one more stop. So I'm gonna be at four and a half aperture, which is not ideal. I'd use an ND filter if I wanted to stop it down further. But for this lighting setup, I'm just gonna stay at four and a half F stop, 4.5. And basically, if I remove this card, you'll see that that line has come out of the histogram over here, so there's gonna be, when I bring this in, there's gonna be a line, there you go, that comes in this line here. So that's about 40% IRE where we are right now. So I'm happy now that the image is correctly exposed in log, so I'm just gonna record from the camera and get a clean image. So now I'm happy that this is the image that we're gonna bring into post, and we're gonna work on now in Premiere Pro. All right, so first things first, jump on over to the Canon website before you go any further. I'm just gonna pop my glasses on here. So we're going to usa.canon.com and just looking right now at the 5D, what a beautiful thing it is. Uh, but quickly jump over to drivers and downloads uh, and you wanna look at the cameras, EOS Rebel digital cameras and you wanna go for the cameras and across to the 5D Mark IV. So click on the 5D Mark IV. It'll jump you into the product page of the 5D Mark IV. So then you wanna click on drivers and downloads. And the first one on the list, which was recently released for us on the 7th of the 5th, 2018, is the Canon Lookup Table version 2017-12. So click select, download the software. It's about 200 megabytes. Get that downloaded. I've just downloaded that. So I'll bring you now over to my finder window. So basically here, I've just got it as the Canon LUT and you just open her up 
and it gives you all this information. So I'm going to run you through that information now. Basically, you want to look at the 1D LUT in English and 3D LUT in English. So I'm just going to pull up the 1D LUT English and it gives you this bit of information here. It's talking about a gamma transfer 1D LUT, a 1D lookup table version 2.0. So the LUT category is a viewing LUT. The LUT overview is it's a 1D LUT that converts from Canon Log or Canon Log 2 or Canon Log 3 gammas. Now, a bit of information here that I believe is correct from what I've been able to find is that the, the 1DC uh, is the similar log that they put onto the 5D Mark IV. Now that is Canon Log. So we're not worrying about anything. We're not worried about Canon Log 2 or Canon Log 3 Gamma. We're only going to be focusing on Canon Log. So this includes a lot of stuff, but really we're only going to focus on that. So it talks about the application models. It says there's a different 1D LUTs uh, used for different products and they've got different gamma settings. So we need to check the corresponding table below to find out what group of settings the Canon 5D Mark IV is in. And if we go down the list here, everyone, we can see that the Canon 5D Mark IV is in group three. So page two of this, stay with me here. I know this is a lot of information, but this would just set up for us so we know exactly what we're using of those Canon LUTs. And I'll go through that in a little bit. So here we've got group three. There's only two checkboxes selected for group three. That is Canon Log full range from 10-bit, uh, 12-bit, and 16-bit, and it's BT709, which with, which with a gamma of 2.2, stay with me here, and, and to full and narrow range, and that can be used on the 5D Mark IV. And the second thing we've got is we've got a Canon Log full range, 10, 12, and 16 bits, and it's a wide DR, and that can also be used so from Canon Log to a wide DR. Now, I'm pretty sure that these are both in the Rec. 709 Gamma, so um, the Rec. 709 color space, but the rest of them, we can trial them and everything like that, but they're not built by Canon for the 5D Mark IV. Now, that was a lot, so I'm just gonna have a little bit of my smoothie here while I just recuperate. All right, great. So let's move on. So basically the LUT, it gives you the, more information here. It tells you uh, what the file naming convention is for every LUT, which is great. It tells you what LUTs you need for conversion to the wide DR, which is really good as well. Great information. Then it gives you these gamma data values at different brightnesses for C log and C log two and C log three. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm just wanting to put that LUT on and apply it. So a little bit of back information for you on that. Now that was the 1D LUTs, also got the 2D LUTs here, I'll pull up the English and the 2D LUTs. And basically what it's telling me here is the 3D LUTs are not available for the 5D Mark IV. Now we can try them out, that's probably fine, we could try them and see what happens. But basically, this information says that the 3D lookup tables are not for the 5D. So, hopefully you're still with me, everyone. So basically, copy copy this whole thing across, and we're going to jump into applications here, and we'll just give it a list. And in Adobe Premiere Pro, you're going to right-click on the application and choose Show Package Contents. So now we are inside Adobe Premiere Pro Package Contents, and you just want to drop down the menu here and you can scroll down here to Lumetri and pull down Lumetri and you've got this one called LUTs. So open up LUTs, Creative, Legacy or Technical, you can pop them anywhere in there. I've already got Creative LUTs so I'm gonna chuck it down in Technical and I've just dropped the whole LUT pack in there. Just the whole LUT pack I've just dropped straight in. So now my LUTs are installed. Uh, I've gotta go back to Premiere and I have to close out Premiere now that they're installed. So I'm just going to save. I'm going to close Premiere, quit Premiere. And I'm just going to save, I'm going to say no to that. I'm say no to that. Great. And once Premiere is closed, I'm going to reopen Premiere. Hope you guys are still with me. Just reopen that while that opens. I'm just going to take another sip. 
<sighs> smoothie, yeah, great. Right, so here is the image we shot in Canon Log on in Premiere, and we've seen where those LUTs are all installed um, over in Finder here. They're installed in the LUT section. I've left all of them in there. Um, I've just dumped the whole file in and I've left them all in there. So we'll see quite a number of them when we are in our Premiere window, but that's all good. We can work with that, no problem at all. So jump straight away into the basic correction and choose the input LUT. And basically I'm just gonna select the first one here, BT2020 Canon Log to BT2020 YDR 17 F. N. Now, full and neutral, that's what F means, full and means neutral. Full, full, let's just choose that. It tends to crush out my blacks too much. So for this image, I'm gonna use FN, which is full neutral, not full, full. I think it might be full, uh, full LUT applied in the, in the highlights and a full LUT applied, full application in the shadows so I want full neutral now I don't know if that's the right terminology or not for that but I like full neutral so I like this as a bit of a starting point we can try a few others we can try the 65 FN which is a little bit different in the shadow detail it really only touches the shadow detail um, we've got Canon Log 2 BT09 uh, BT, uh, BT 709 709 we can try that which kind of pushes and punches up our reds, draws up the highlights a little more. Um, the BT2020 Canalog to BT709 wide DR kind of adds a little too much into the highlight areas of the image. Um, so you can see it adds a little bit too much into the highlights there. So then I would probably more so go for the BT2020 Canon Log to the BT709 Wide DR 17FN uh, version 1.1. It, this kind of gives me, for me, the best starting point. I like a little bit of magenta in skin tones and bloom out skin tones a little bit. So this for me is a good, a pretty good starting point. I could try the boost up and see if there's any change in the shadow detail but that didn't really change all that much um, what it did that do let me just have a look again it just probably brought a little more saturation into the shadows so this might be my go-to BT 2020 Canon log to BT 709 wide DR 65 FN I think I've found the one that I like for this image so let me just have a look at this and I think that looks pretty good. Um, now, what I can also do, I'm pro probably a little bit too crushed down in the blacks. Um, so what I might do is, um, I might just go to the, I might just go back to the 17 FN. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, a little more detail in the blacks, but I do like how it brought some more contrast across the shirt there. So that's probably my selection. Now I don't have to grade that any more at all. I could use that clip, no worries. But what I'll do is I'll just bring up the uh, creative and I'll just sharpen it to 50%. 50, 50%. Let's have a look at that. So it just adds a little bit of sharpening to the image you need. You can even sharpen 100%, which is probably a little bit over sharpened, but you can see the image looks nice and clean and crisp. So maybe like 60% sharpening. What do we got there? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm happy with the way the skin tone looks and overall everything else. So, so that would be where my correction is. Now I can probably touch the saturation a little bit too just to give it a little more pop in the skin tone, but sometimes that can introduce some, some yeah, other issues with the image, but that looks fine, a little bit more saturation. 
And the only other thing is maybe I can just pull up the shadow detail that little tiny bit or the blacks that little tiny bit all right so that's my final image there and if we go back to the original that's the original and that's the final image and I'll just toggle between those that's the original and that's the final that's the original original and the final and it took all of about a minute to get that grade locked in and looking really nice and clean so guys hopefully that was helpful um, that's the way that I use the Canon log on the 5D Mark IV with the Canon provided LUTs to get my starting point and to then take the image just that tiny bit further but it's a really easy thing as long as you're getting your exposure correct and your white balance correct out of camera and you saw how I did that by using the grey card for both of those I got the exposure correct using the 18% grey card on my skin tone and then I used the grey card to get my white balance correct by taking a photograph of the grey card on the light stand which you saw when I did the second camera shot so hopefully you guys can utilize some of this information and let it help you to discover how you're going to use the Canon log on your camera I've also put a link below to where you can get all of the information that I've given you where you can get the Canon log LUTs from I've put that information in the links below so check out those links thank you so much for watching subscribe if you haven't already to the channel because the content I'm going to be producing uh, continually like this kind of stuff is going to be so helpful for everything you're doing uh, with DSLR filmmaking, filmmaking uh, as a business, freelance, anything like that is going to be really helpful stuff. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Alright guys, that's enough for me today. We'll see you in the next video.